You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Time, weather, and... on the campfire my friends this episode oh big warm hug big warm hug it's so good i'm gonna trust no matter where you are that you're you're needing some sort of pick me up some sense of connection uh and that is exactly what you're gonna get in this conversation today i had the absolute honor of sitting down today and sharing space with the wonderful she's an author she's a podcaster she's a speaker uh, and overall, she's just this amazing life coach. This is Alana Higginbotham. She is so fantastic. I've been following her since the beginning of the pandemic, and she just offered so much beautiful insight as we moved through that and really encouraged a lot of my work. Honestly, her energy is just so grounding and beautiful and warm. So I'm so excited. If you are not familiar with Alana's work, that you're going to be able to get in and hear all about that now. She talks all about uh, she's a mental strategist, so how to really get in there. And she offers so many beautiful nuggets and insight. And this this episode to me was like the perfect combination of actual like interview of asking somebody questions about their work with what also felt like a very neutral and uh, comfortable conversation. So it just moves really nicely. It just felt like watching somebody ski. You know what I mean? Uh, so hey, I'm. I won't pitch it anymore. You know what I mean? It's great. And you're going to have a good time because I did. Please enjoy Miss Alana. Boom. She made it happen and she's back. Round of applause, gentlemen, ladies. Yeah. No, thank you so much. I, um, like I was sharing before we even started where I was like, you guys have been listening to the podcast, you know, or following on socials that I'm like, October is the month that like, things that aren't working, things that are getting in our way, or things simply we're like, that's just not coming with us anymore. We've outgrown it. And that's where I'm at. And October has been a month to what a show, what a time. It <laughs> What a show, what a time in our lives. I mean, I'm telling you like every morning, I feel like I wake up and I'm like, I don't know what's on the books today. Like it's just, but I'm ready for it. Yes. And so I just appreciate, um, like when, when you logged on and I'm like, okay, I'm throwing this thing on my eye. Like, I was like, you know what? We know how we want these systems to go. And I think it's, I need to give myself the same grace of that. I would to like, if a company was like, Hey, you know, we know you've always loved coming to our restaurant, but we're like in transition, like, please keep supporting the business. I wouldn't be like, you haven't figured that out perfectly. I'm never coming here again. Like I would never and, and think that's not the time we're living in anymore. All that perfection. Um, we're not doing that anymore. Women are bringing their babies to work now. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. yeah, forget about that. We did that for too long. It's time for us to settle into the feminine. And this yes. is how we're going to do it. Oh, so I a love lot it. Who are coming out on the deep end, mucky and dirty and hurting because they've spent so much time keeping up these appearances that nobody believed in the first damn place. But here we well, are. No, I agree with that. And then I'm also like, I feel like people are way more interesting when they're letting you know who they really are. Like, I always tell people that I'm like, money is not impressive to me. Like, oh God. you know, and I'm like, being attractive is not impressive. Now, that's not to say that there aren't like, there's not spectacle to those things, but that's different than like something being a value or something. So yeah, I'm, I'm totally right there with you. And because that's been a big thing. Now I'm just, we're in a coaching session. I'm just telling you all the things we're I'm working on. We're two girlfriends having a talk. <laughs> Could you imagine? I'm like, here's something else I want to talk to you about. Uh, no, but um, is that there was a, one of the um, folks that I interviewed, her name's Amy Keller and she's really wonderful. And she said a mantra that she uses is I am where I am, no matter where I am. Mm. And I was like, oh, that just helps me wrangle all of like my energy because I've got two kids that are little kids. So it's They're like small, totally on yes. That's and a different stage of life. Home. And just all the things where it's like, 
you don't need to go into every room and be like, oh, well, I'm sorry for this thing and for the and for that. It's like your life is full. So, you know, sometimes like full's a little messy, but messy doesn't mean not in charge. Like there's a difference between, you know, um, that it's not all over the place, but there's just kind of a lot. Yeah. You're, you're intentional about how you handle your life and you are willing to, you're willing to allow things to get messy at the expense of the humans and the peace that you're creating in your life foundationally you're kicking ass and taking names. It just don't look the same way as, you know, um, the masculine energy. And I, I, I shudder to even use those terms because I don't want people to think that men are bad and women are good. Right. But the people who name things, they, that's what they named it. I'm just calling it what it is, you know, ha, oh. that's hilarious. <laughs> like, this isn't on me. Okay. No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying what they say so they can know what I'm saying. I love it. Um, and really, that's what where it comes from. There's so much um, people who created this way of being were not confident in their being. Mm -hmm. So they created a picture that looked like it was really crisp, really um, flawless. And then everybody else was like, oh, that looks like that's successful. Let me do that. Let me tell you, foundationally, I'm a, I kick ass at everything that I do. It may not look like it to the people who give a shit about, like you were saying, money, cars, material things, but they asses ain't that happy. Can you be happy and create the family that I, that you want foundationally? You absolutely can. But just because it's not all perfect looking doesn't mean we're not happy. Yeah. Yeah. I Crazy. love that. It will, and it's also like, I, you know, even just the terminology of like being intentional that's so much of it too. Like I always have to check myself on that where I'm like, but is it the season for that thing? Because yeah. a lot of times, like when I'm wanting to do the Rachel, La like haha, the Rachel LaFour show of meaning like, no, it's fine. Like, look how much I've created and look, everything I've done. I'm a value. I'm a value. I'm a value. And it's going, bring it back in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it is of like that ownership and that sense of self of like everything you need, you already have, and you're not going to be able to do it all at once. And I, cause I do the comparison game more to like people who have an entire life's work of body of work, you know, yeah. where I'm like, well, you're not there yet. What, like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like that's actually more sometimes than kind of the more um, subdued, I think ways that we compare ourselves to others. Even in that, I'm like, no, I'm going to go big. I'm going to compare myself to Quincy Jones, you know, or somebody, <laughs> like, you know, where it's like, relax. Okay. Relax. LaForce. Um, I'm like, well, you know, they did an entire event for him at the Hollywood bowl. It's like, yeah, he's also like, you know, 90 some odd years old, relax. Um, but yeah. So tell me, so I, I remember the first time I've been following you for a while. Cause you, it yes. must've been, was it during COVID when you started the, like the drive up videos? Yes, it was. Okay. So for those of you that are listening, obviously we'll have all of her socials go follow her, but I, you know, where she just in her car pulls up, looks at the camera and like, you know, gives you a piece of advice and was like, or oh, it's up to you. And then like drives out of frame. And I was like, I don't know where that woman's going, but I'm coming along for the ride. Like I was like, I am in it. Um, but then I think later you had posted something of like, Hey, tell me, you know, why do you guys follow me or this or that? And that's how we got chatting. Um, and so, yeah, I've been following like your work and, and what you share. And, and I, I'm just so attracted to, I think the authenticity of your work, which is as simple as like, it's literally as simple as like, why well, believe you? Like, I believe if you're like, this is the thing that I'm going through, or this is the lesson that I've learned. Like, I believe you. And I think there's so many people where I'm like, sure, you're giving me the lesson, mm -hmm. but I don't believe that you have any business. Now that's my own judgment, but it's just the, yeah, yeah. you, you sound know. like you just read that from a cue card. Yes. Is the yeah. thing. And sometimes yeah. they are reading it from a cue card. Sometimes I hear four different people give me the exact same quote. I don't give a shit about plagiarism because there's really no new thought that exists in this world. But um, the thing that you're talking about, that authenticity is just, well, for one, it's me, uh, you know, I'm authentic. I, it's just so hard to not be, it's just so hard for me to not say it 
like it comes out that I just don't do it. But the other part is a lot of those, I would probably say most more than 90% of those are things that I said to somebody in real life or said to myself based on some shit somebody did in real life. And so I think that's a huge reason why it comes across so authentic because the voice inflection, how I say it and that head nod at the end, it really is. I'm really genuinely like, uh, like there's one that I do and I did it because there was somebody who used to be in my camp that liked to throw around the word perfectionism. Mm. Uh, you're a perfectionist. And I, and I know for a fact that I'm not because baby, listen, <laughs> I've come a long way and uh, I still got ways to go. But um, I realized that this person, li- the reason why this person looked at my life like I was so perfect is because they thrive in chaos. And so one of my drive ups was um, order can look like perfectionism if you're accustomed to chaos. Mm. And that was from my heart. That was something that I had to tell this person. And it resonated so highly that I thought, you know what? I'm going to do a drive by on that. I'm going to do a drive up on that. I love that. Yeah, it's funny because I'm always curious too how people, because like, you know, my before I really started doing spiritual speaking and things about well-being, I've been a comedian forever. So I've always told people my view of how I see the world. But it was interesting as I started to share more through like the spiritual lens of how I see the world. And it's the same thing where like, I'm always curious because like some comedians, they're like, oh, I sit down for like an hour a day and I have to write five new jokes every day. I've never been that person. I'm just living my life and I'll say something. I'm like, oh, that's really funny. Like I, you know, and then I may go back and workshop it and clean it. But that's what I'm always curious about a lot of these, um, Like you said, not the plagiarized thoughts, but the ones everybody has a take on like letting go. Everybody has a take on like boundaries, everybody, you know, and rightfully so. But it's like, how, how can we give them you? It's the same thing of stand up. It's like, how many people have, you know, an airplane joke or uh, an Uber joke. And so I think sometimes I like the parallels of my work in that way where I'm like, Oh yeah. I don't need to be worried about saying the most, like the thing no one's ever thought about before. Like that's not what we need you to do, but we need you to give us the medicine in the way that you know how. Yeah. And that's, you know, the, yeah, well, but that's also like the thing that I like about your work too. And, and I love so much about a lot of us that are in this work where then you can even start to find like, Oh, I always love the way that like, Alana talks about like this one specific thing. So I know if there's something I'm going on in my life, I'm like, Oh, I bet you, she's got a great like drive by or a piece about this. Um, and so it's just really building that loyalty first and foremost to ourselves, but certainly like with our, our audience and stuff like that. Um, but now I just want to ask you like more specific questions because I could talk to you (laughs) as like, you know, a peer and things forever, but I'm like, I love it. I I love it. Go for it. I'm like, what do I want to learn? Yeah, I'm kind of curious as much as you're wanting to share because <clears throat> it's rare that those of us, at least in this iteration of time, were brought up with a lot of these ideas. So it's kind of like, where was that tipping point? If there was one for you where you're like, I want better or I want to better my well-being and kind of this journey for you, what does that look like in that evolution of self? Oh, my Lord. I could take you back to uh, grade school. I mean, I've got time. I'm not even joking. Like uh, (laughs) one of the first, my first memories of um, doing this work, because, because for me, I became a life coach because what I do, that's what they call it. Yeah. I didn't go, you know what? I think I want to be a life coach. Let me learn about that. Then I'm going to go be one. I've been a life coach my whole life. Um, because I've been able to see the world differently, particularly adults. Like I've been able to look at adults and be like, "Mm, you full of shit. That don't add up. And I'm talking like six-year-old me, five-year-old me. Right. And so I can, I can remember being 10 years old and having a conversation with my fifth grade teacher 
that mm, that don't that don't go together, sis. <laughs> that don't make sense. Um, I love short that. version of the story. We had a kid that came into our class after school. The school year had already started. I can't remember how long we had been in the school year, but um, he was not treating the kids very nicely at all. Right. And this is one of my first memories of understanding that you can both you can both sympathize with a person's situation and hold them accountable at the same time mm. at the same time um and he was he was sort of wreaking havoc right like not necessarily even just doing mischievous fifth grade stuff but just you know getting under people's skin stealing things from people and whatnot and he ended up leaving after a short time. I don't know if it was a couple of weeks, month, whatever, but the teacher, we would complain to the teacher, you know, uh, he did this, he did that. And when he left the day that he was gone, the teacher stood in front of the class and um, she really admonished us all because we were complaining about the kid and her excuse for admonishing us was that he was in the foster care system. And, you know, he was in our class because this, he was in a new foster home and now he had to leave. And I said to her, that makes, you know, that's uh, sad that that's his life, but it doesn't make it okay for him to treat people just any kind of way they want. He wants to treat us so he can be held accountable and we can also, you know, kiss his forehead, pray for him, whatever, because of what he's going through. And that has just been the thread in my life. Like, my brain kind of works uh, like a puzzle. Remember, um, was it Sesame Street? One of these things is doing its own thing. One of these things is not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of these things is not like together. the other. Yeah. Yeah, one of these things is not like the other. Yeah. And so for me, that's how my brain works. Uh, and I didn't put legs to it till I was older, but love is like the rule, the ruler. Mm. It's like the measuring stick. And so my brain... I now articulate it this way as an adult, but my brain was very much like, hmm, that doesn't feel like love. I understand what you're saying. You're doing this and you're saying this because you love me, but it doesn't feel like love. And as I got older and became a mom, that's really when the mindset, mental strategist, guru started to blossom even more because I knew there was a, a, the kind of person that I wanted to be as a mom. And I knew the tools that I had, the ones that I was given, they, that wasn't going to feel like love if I used those tools with my children. So being the mom that I am and being the wife that I am is really what shaped the woman that you see here today. Because there were some very calculated decisions I had to make. Who do I want to be? And what I saw growing up really fortified the foundation, not as in gave me an example, but gave me an example as of what I didn't want to cre recreate. Yeah. Which sometimes is just as important. Like I, I, I think find it a lot more of important. it has been more important in my life. Yeah. And I think, um, how do I want to say this of like, I think a lot of times when we, and this is like a general statement, but like if we come from a household where like for whatever the rules were or the communication, whatever was happening, that it's like, that's not what we want to do. Even if it's not highly traumatic, but it's like, oh, dad's a narcissist. Mom just says yes to everything. Like whatever it is, and we decide yeah. that's not what we want to do. I always remind people that that example is still there as like very formidable information. And that I always want people to be mindful because that's also going to show us a lot about like where our triggers are, why we respond to things in a way that like you may not even realize until 15 years later and you're in a conversation with somebody and you're like, ooh, that hits me weird. And when you can still hold whatever your upbringing was in, in whatever, and everybody needs to hold that differently for themselves. And I don't even think it's necessarily my job to say, here is how you hold it or here is where you place it, right? Yes. My job is to support you and help you figure out where that is for you. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes I tell people, I'm like, let's put it on a shelf. In the same way yes. that like, 
okay, Christmas decorations are things that we don't visit very often, but you don't want to throw Christmas or holiday decorations away every year and then go buy new ones. That would be absurd, right? Um, a lot of people do, but I'm just saying for purposes of the metaphor. <laughs> and so we, we yeah. want to be able to put something up on the shelf so that when we do kind of like rough up against those things, we can pull that diorama back down and take a look. When we're engaging with people from our childhood, engaging in these like family patterns that we don't engage that way anymore, we don't operate that way, but mm -hmm. then we flare up and get frustrated of like, why aren't they listening? Why don't they hear my boundaries? Or like, you know, th this, this idea sometimes that we slip back into with family and upbringing and sometimes I think, at least I'll speak for me, that it brings up um, anger or a thing of like, well, it, maybe if I did this thing better, or I communicated better, then they would blank. Mm -hmm. And when I get to look at my diorama and take that out and go, those players aren't here. Mm -hmm. It isn't about They me. are where I left them. So why yes. would they have, a, they didn't come on this journey and pick the fruit that I picked or plant the flowers that I planted. Why the hell would they? So really, I'm pissed at me. I'm frustrated with me. Yes, yes. I'm mad with me. And the boundary was never meant for them. The boundary is the accountability that goes with the boundary is all mine. Mm. It's not if you don't do this, then I'm going to do this to you. It's you don't even have to tell them what the boundary is. It's this is the boundary. If you do what I already know you, you going to do. <laughs> Yeah. Then this is what I'm gonna do, and yeah. you move on with your life. You 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 just you just you just wrote a whole uh, life course right there. What you said about you know, um, the, just the family and uh, you know wanting them to respond a certain way, and you know, there's levels to this thing. You get to a point where you laugh at how they respond, and you still in, you're able to actually enjoy their company once those yes. wounds heal a little Oof. bit. Oof, I feel, oh, clip it, clip it. That's the clip. It's so, that's, I'm thinking in this moment and Caroline, um, who's our producer, if you're listening, I want to get um, like a, like a, a preach button or something. I realize because when people really get on it, like, <laughs> yes. like a game show, I want to be able to hit that button and it just is like preach or something. Preach. Or I'm like, There's, just let them know louder for the people in the back. But I, um, I love that what you say so much because I'm just now coming around to really being in that place. Like I said, October was where I'm like, I'm letting all of these things die where I'm like, I want to be able to enjoy these certain people in my life to the ability that I can. And I want to be able to genuinely love them where they're at because yeah. I've done so much work to untangle them from me. Mm -hmm. And again, like you said, it's still holding people accountable. I mean, and not just letting people be completely shitty, but you'll begin to learn like what ball is worth going for. Like it isn't yeah. it, it, worth to go, you know, after every ball. And I have so much gratitude now for the people who challenge me in that way. Um, and even for the people, I, I realized that of like, the people who came along on my journey and then like either I went farther and farther down the road with them when I was supposed to go the other way. It's mm -hmm. like all of those people that showed up and I, I just realized I said like a prayer for them the other day in my meditation. And I'm like, I'm so grateful for them. Like I'm and like genuinely being able to say that. Cause I'm like, to me, I'm like, that's like guru shit. That's the things you hear people say. And you're like, yeah, good for you. Oh, yeah, yeah you're I love grateful the for the guy who uh, stole all your money out of your bank account and was sleeping with your best friend the entire time. Grateful for that guy. No, seriously, because that is how intense of a moment your ass needed to get off of that horse that you have been riding for so damn long. And that is where you realize things don't. Everything that happens to me is for me. Mm -hmm. it's not happening to me it's happening for me and everybody everybody is really just walking each other home i forgot some guru said that i recently Ram heard das. a celebrity yes that's it yeah. and yeah. i recently heard a celebrity use that uh term as well but that's really that's really what we're doing you do get to a place where you're like you know let's say the the issue is with your mom you get to a place where you're like oh mama and you realize, yeah, 
you know, that person did whoever they are, some things to me, they said some things to me in a time where they maybe should not have, but it is what has helped me become who I am today. I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate for certain things because of some of the things that I dealt with. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, so obviously, okay, so life coaching, you're the mental strategist, which I love so much because there was a, a bit for a while, I struggle still of like explaining to people what I do. Like I'm still trying to figure it out. And for a while, I, re I really like the term even like mental hygienist because we oh, just want to oh, get, I love that. you know, we just want to get in there and clean some stuff out, you know, Absolutely. let's just make a little space. Let's just clean it out. Um, but do you, do you find like, um, I'm curious, like where you are now like do you either have like rituals or things that you do like kind of what is like your day-to-day -day for you look like because I always remind people too of um like listeners and meaning when I'm sharing with people of like I have to be doing this work all day every day in order to be able to share it and then God willing keep walking this path and do more and more so I'm kind of curious like where you're at like what are the things that you're doing for yourself to kind of like um, you know, hack and heal your own life so that you're having more fun? Well, I love that question because um, I don't know. I feel like we don't talk about it enough. There's not enough space for it. I don't know what the word is. Um, there's some assumptions that I make that I realize are not necessarily true. Like I have an amazing relationship with my husband. Like it is amazing. Like, my life is an amazing life. That's why, like, you can't just throw some collab at me and think, you know, you know, oh, it's going to be this much money. I could care less about that because what I have, money can't buy. But, however, it's my assumption that people who see my amazing relationship, that they just know that the reason it's amazing is because of, uh, the, the things that have come up that we have been able to overcome together. We're not just waking up every day. Everything's perfect. Cause where's the growth in that? And so it's the same thing for me in my um, mindset and my mental wealth journey. My assumption is that all these people that say they love my work, just know the reason why her work is so authentic is because she's going through a lot of the same things that she's talking about. And so I said that to say, there is no, you know how people are like, well, I wake up at 5 a.m. every morning and my before I get out of bed, I spend the first 30 minutes, all these things, right? I just got to do what's authentic to me. And so yeah. currently my routine is I wake up in the morning and I work out. Uh, when I first started the routine, baby, let me tell you, I wouldn't even brush my teeth before I worked out. <laughs> Because I know how my brain works and I knew I had to hack my brain. And mm -hmm. so in my closet is all my workout clothes at the front of the closet hung on hangers. All of my tennis shoes or workout shoes are on the shelf with socks stuck in them. Why do you go through all that trouble, Alana? Because I need to hack my brain and I need to say I'm going to do this before anything. I don't even leave my bedroom until I have on my workout clothes. And in the beginning, it was me riding my bike, right? This was me getting myself, a lot of it, most of it was mental, but some of it was also because I was um, bouncing back from ankle surgery. Mm. And so I needed that mobility, right? And so now, my that right now is what is feeding my soul because I am watching my body grow, my body is becoming stronger, because my resolve is so strong, that is obviously hacked into my mental system. And it makes what I do for fun is very different right now. Now, what I do for fun, is that what I do for fun because I'm doing this? Or am I at the time in my life where my activities are linking up with just where I am on the journey? Mm -hmm. I don't know which came first, chicken or the egg, who knows? But... What I'm also doing is because of that, I have edited how I show up and if I show up. Mm. My therapist said to me uh, many wonderful nuggets. 
But uh, one of the best things, um, one thing that I keep with me is she said, you know, Alana, the beauty about the roles that we play in people's lives and in our own life is that we can step in and out of a role whenever we want. And then recently she said to me in keeping with, uh, you know, me deciding where I'm going to go, where I'm not. She said, you know, Alana, you're allowed to opt out whenever you choose. You don't have to, you know, because as as women like you and I who very much say what's on our mind, you know, we show up really big whether we really want to or not. That's just how God made us. Um, There's this thought that we don't care what other people think. And that's true to an extent, but there are a group of people. One of the reasons why we don't care about what a lot of people think is because we're focused on this little group of people that we're giving our energy to. And I ain't got nothing left for the other people in the world who act like that. I'm giving all the grace that I have in me to those people. And now I'm in a season of my life where the opportunity is opening up where I don't even have to give those people the obligatory, my obligatory presence, the obligatory text messages. If you text me, I am in no obligation to text you back. If you call me, I am in no obligation to return your call. My oldest son, who's uh, 20, said, I mean, mom, it's your phone. (laughs) You can do what you want to do with it. I was like, yeah, you're so right. So that's my current um, routine. Uh, I do spend time meditating, but I do it in an active state, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, I, so say, I, have, yeah. I have head trash that doesn't actually belong to me that comes up, kind of like floats in the air. In my book, I refer to it as um, it kind of floats up into the... Um, the the display of your life if you will and then you get to decide when it's in the display what you're going to do with it and i talk about my take toss replace method and it really is a lot simpler than even saying the words take toss and replace so when somebody else's language pops into my head i either if my brain is quick enough turn that around and say the opposite but more often than not i just switch the thought to something that's good And right now, what is really good for me is the consistency in my uh, health journey. Hmm. You know, every uh, every day, six days a week, I work out on Sunday. I do a um, a stretching, about 20 minute stretch exercise. You know, none of the workouts are more than an hour. And even the ones that are an hour are very few throughout the month. But um, just that consistency. I'm living in a space where also my magic pill is just don't stop. Mm. Just like, like for instance, with the workout, um, the only goal for the workout is for me to get dressed, walk into my garage and press play. That's it. Whatever happens after I press play, maybe I have medium effort today to give to the workout. But what's true about somebody who's on a journey like this is as soon as you press play, you're in it. And if your brain works like our brains work, by the time you have enough breath in your body to pay attention to the time, you, you're you halfway through the workout. And so I come back inside. I make myself a green drink while I'm making my breakfast. You know, this is how I'm showing up for myself in this season of my life. That's the routine. Oh, it makes me like so emotional. I like, (laughs) first of all, thank you so much for sharing that with me. And second of all, I feel like, especially with what you're talking about of the effort that we have to move our bodies every day. And I feel like I've really over the last, actually since my last son was born, so only like six months have really redefined what movement means for me. Oh, like I really, like that, Rachel. Really, really deconstructing it. And I will try to share briefly and also not get too emotional, but I feel like, you know, Let it out, we, girl. we we grew up in this time where, you know, it's like you move your body because you exercise because that makes you thin. That's very much what the programming has always been. And, uh, you know, where it's like you eat things because they make you thin. You eat like it was never even like, oh, you eat vegetables because 
they're made on earth. That's what we're supposed to, it's real food. It's going to ground you. That wasn't even a part of it. It was like, well, you should eat vegetables because they make you thin, but don't eat ones that are carnivorous because what they're going to do is they're going to make you bloat. And so you don't want to eat those ones. Like just, you know, and don't all eat fruit because it's got sugar in it. Right. I mean, just over and over and over and over again. And so you get to this place where like, I, I think where it makes me emotional is it just makes me sad for my body that because of all of that mixed messaging, I never felt comfortable to move my body because I loved my body, Mm -hmm. that it, it was seen as a punishment and it was seen as even if I did it, it still wasn't good enough. And the amount of like confidence, the ability of like, when you talked about being able to like feel your body getting stronger in real time is like the closest I will ever be to a superhero. And it is phenomenal. Like to literally Absolutely. day after day, like put those deposits in and suddenly be like, you know, I make big babies. I've got a six month old who's like 25 pounds. I got a two and a half year old, like to carry both of them up the stairs and stuff like that. Like I had to get to a place where like I could curl thirties and not think about it. Like you know, I have to be able to really, really give myself the space to grow within my body. So I feel like I'm just so grateful to be on this like journey now, quote unquote, yes. with, with my body of like fully integrating body, mind, and soul. And I'm like, oh, like that shit's magical. Like when you really get to that place where you're aligning all of it, I'm like, and I'm only in the very kind of like baby stages of, of this, you know, reclaiming my body journey. But the, the thing that I was so lit up by what you said about, I accept that every day is not going to be a hundred percent. I've had so much more grace with myself. Going back to what we talked about at the beginning of the episode of like messy and intentional is different than chaotic. They're Absolutely. different. Absolutely. And so I feel like it's the same thing is true of when I, same thing, I work out six days a week, although now I have two pinched nerves in my back, so I'm resting, which is a whole other thing. Um, but I typically, I do hit workouts six days a week and it's the same thing. First thing in the morning. And in fact, I shouldn't share this on a public forum, but I will. Um, there are some nights that I will sleep in my workout clothes because I am oh, so oh, tired. Yes. Oh, and I'm oh, like, applause. I'm like applause that, that way. I will wake up and then all I got to do is get shoes on and leave my house. Like I purposely do it that way so that there's no negotiation because for me, it's like, you know, when I'm doing intuitive readings for people, when I'm creating, when I'm being all of that, it's always, as I identify it, a channel for what is the highest choice that I can make. It doesn't always mean that I'm able to make that choice. But when I move my body, like when you're talking about mental trash, I love that exercise so much. Um, for me, it's the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm in a better place to be able to mentally strategize, to, to, to be aware of what's up there when I've moved my body. Because then mm-hmm. I've at least gotten it out of my physical vessel. Mm-hmm. And then it's almost like wiping your computer. So it's like, okay, well, now it's just on the hard drive, but it's not all over the place. Absolutely. So it's it just the, the grace that I've been able to give myself of like, Rachel, you don't have to hit your goals every single day that you go to the gym. The goal is to show up. That's because, it. That's the because goal. it's also where it's like the goal is no longer like, oh, if I work out, then I'm going to look like blank. That's not the goal. The goal is that you move your body because A, we're grateful to our body. We're grateful to have a body that moves and that is healthy. And it's the way that we, we give thanks. Our way of giving thanks to our body is by showing up for our body. Period. Absolutely. That's it. And the byproduct so, is that you will look like such and such. For sure. I mean, right. But it's like that. That's also, I always say, um, and I'm still trying to figure out like how to actually formulate this and, and say it in some sort of uh, speech or whether I put it in a show or something. But, you know, where forever I was seeking short term fixes for thinking it would give me long term gratification. And Absolutely. that's not what happens drinking three beers in an hour and a half because I don't want to feel that feeling anymore. Even if I'm consciously, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to get drunk. So I don't have to think about this thing. That's not what's happening, but I'm going, oh, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better. And then by the third one, well, now I'm feeling great. So I like that. I'm going to wake up. Right. And then, but then you, what happens to you? You wake up the next day and then you're hungover, and then the thing is still there. So it's like, you know, smoking a cigarette or buying that thing on Amazon or texting that X, like all of those instant things we do thinking that it will relieve long-term when in reality, 
It's sitting with the thing that sucks because that's short term and it creates long term well being. So we actually Absolutely. have to just f- flip that mindset. And it's a part of the journey. Um, you know, um, I say all the time that life is just a series of information being presented to us and we decide what it means for mm. you. That's your process. You know, the world or society tells you that that's ugly. Society tells you that you shouldn't drain three beers. Society tells you you shouldn't text your ex. But what if that's part of your process? Mm. What if you, what if what you've been through has made you so immune to the heat that you have to put your hand in the flame in order to realize, okay, I I officially got it. I officially got it. It doesn't make you bad. It just makes you you. That's your process. And if we're really all being transparent here, everybody has a process that's ugly. Not everybody has the courage to show it. Or not everybody was assigned to show, you know, the challenges that they are, they're going through. And it's a beautiful thing. And I really feel like when a woman has a baby, it's similar. The effect on the body is very similar to if you were in a car accident and you had a, mm-hmm. a, a concussion, right? I mean, let, let's let's put it into perspective, Rachel. <laughs> Someone goes in and rips a human from your loins. And mm-hmm. then the human that has caused all these challenges for these last 40 weeks now needs you to like them and love them and raise them. <laughs> and that's a traumatic experience. And so I just really don't think that our society fully understands what is happening inside of a woman's body, more specifically her mind, when she gives birth to a child. And some of us talk about, you know, uh, what society says. We're supposed to do those predetermined things that society wants us to do. But some of the things are things that we want to do. We're like, you know, I always wanted to when I became a mom. and But we start realizing, okay, well, wait a minute. If I'm going to do that, then maybe I can't do this. Oh, no, 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 no. I can do it. Just because there's space on the calendar doesn't mean that space needs to be filled with something, quote, unquote, productive. Because everything you do is productive. You know, I, um, I don't know if you know this, but I homeschool my children. And so that was an undertaking, you know, this is our 14th year, 14th year, I think. Um, obviously my oldest son has graduated. He is now, uh, you know, in film school pursuing a degree in animation. Um, but the 15 year old, he's still, you know, he's still on the books. And so doing these things, you know, It takes a lot of healing, or should I say, speak for myself, it took a lot of healing from childhood wounds Mm -hmm. to become and and show up as the mom that I am today. Mm -hmm. I had to come to an understanding with myself that I'm going to have to heal while I love on these young people that God gave me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to be okay with not hitting the marks that I set for myself that seemingly they're, they're good marks. Right. But if I set a mark for myself uh, in my physical agility and then I go and fracture my ankle and have surgery, well, probably not going to be able to hit those same marks. Right. So I'm making decisions on the kind of mom I'm going to be before I'm a mom and before my body has changed, before my mind has changed, we just can't do that. I used to have this thing that um, would just really dig the depression hole deeper and deeper. And it coincides with another revelation I had as a mom, but also helped me as a person. My youngest son would come into my room in the morning and he would climb into my bed and he would snuggle his little nose right up against my ear and kiss my neck and say, good morning, mom. And that sounds so amazing and so heart filled, right? Tell us, tell us. I 
for me, it felt like the, the signal that you are the worst mom in the world because you should be already awake in the kitchen before your kid gets out of bed. Mm. What is wrong with you? And because of that, I forfeited the opportunity to really drink in that. However, Mm. fast forward, now he's 15 and it's all good. I do wake up before he does, but we get all the snuggles in that we possibly can, right? But it's in those moments that I had to ask myself, Alana, this this is really an amazing moment but you're some, what is that? What is that thing that's making you take an amazing moment and you feel like the worst mom in the world? Uh, same holds true for when your kids do something that's annoying, like um, your kids laughing, right? Uh, particularly with social media and YouTube, they'll be in another room cracking up and you're like, Lord have mercy, if you could just shut up. <laughs> so I asked myself, um, what is it about the sound of somebody being happy that doesn't make you happy? Why, what is that? Why, why are we so bothered? And so I just asked myself that question. Do you want to create a space where your kid can be happy and smile and laugh? Absolutely, we do. There's an example of it in the book, The Four uh, Agreements, where um, Don Miguel Ruiz talks about you know, the mom whose daughter was singing. And she yells at the girl and says, you have an ugly voice. The girl never sings again. Turns out she really did have a beautiful voice and she never got over that till she was much older. Is that the environment I want to create in my house? It's not. It's not. So one of the questions I ask myself regularly is, what is that? And who do I want to be in this situation? Hmm. That's very helpful to me. Because I'm experiencing this too. Now, don't don't get it twisted. There are some times when I say to them, hey, hey, hey. I get to be frustrated. Yeah. I'm allowed to be frustrated. Now I handle it in a different way. I will say to them, Hey guys, listen, mom hasn't had the best sleep. Um, I'm really tired. And so my filter between aggravation and, you know, me talking to you guys is, is really not what it is. So I just want to apologize in advance. If you say something to me and I don't respond, it's just because I'm trying to come down from that. And they're like, oh, no problem, mom. And guess what else? They're allowed to do that, too. Mm -hmm. They're allowed to do that, too. And that helps me. That helps me in my life. Well, and I think that's, I think, so many thoughts. The first thing I want to say before I forget it was earlier when you said not all of us are, were assigned to share the things that we're going through. And... I, I, I just, I felt that so strongly because there's some days where I'm like, you know, sometimes it's kind of exhausting to just like keep talking all the time. Like maybe there is something else I'm supposed to do. And there is this, you know, kind of like godly or like cosmic assignment that I feel like I'm here to fulfill. So I just, I, I appreciated that because it's even something I like to share with people a lot. Um, I do a lot of creative coaching and stuff like that. And I always like to be mindful of people where I'm like, it's okay if your goals are like to share these things, but only like within your small community, like all of it is helpful. Healing is always helpful. Right. Exactly. Where it's like you lighting up when you are changing those internal systems, whether you believe it or not externally, you show up differently. So even if you don't have like a parade of people, you know, through new Orleans being like, Oh, I've healed it. I've changed. Like everybody come along for the journey. Regardless, people are going to kind of start to follow behind you anyway because they notice that something's different. So I just want to note on that. I just, I couldn't let that thought go. And then I love so much about what you're sharing. I feel like my always biggest thing, you know, going back to what you talked about in the beginning where you're like, Oh, I've always been a life coach. I remember as early as blank. And I feel the same way where I'm Mm -hmm. like, you know, also when you're talking about mental trash of like, whose voice is that I find often that a lot of my even like spiritual gifts as I would define them and um, and kind of like really knowing who I am, like what I was supposed to do here. I, I knew that so concretely at like six years old, yes. probably fifth grade. And then at about seventh grade, it was like, don't 
tell anybody anything and do not be unique. Be just as conventional as everybody else and don't let anybody know. <laughs> like, so, right, we strip ourselves yeah, of you everything. you hit that timeline real good. That, that's, you hit right? that timeline. It just strips us of anything that makes us unique and authentic. And then we spend the rest of our lives, God willing, to reclaim and uncover all of those parts of ourselves. And so with that, when I'm speaking with, I mean, obviously Teddy's six months old, the way that we engage is very different right now than the way that I'm engaging with my almost two and a half year old. And I find it's interesting watching the way that all of my family relates to him. And then I think sometimes the way in which I speak to them or I speak to him, um, I'm sure is a little different than what they're used to that they're, you know, it's a little bit more traditional discipline of what everybody else is used to. And for my thing is I'm like, I can recognize at least specifically in my two and a half year old, he sees the world the way that I do that. We are very simpatico in that way. So I'm like, I am wildly aware that same thing. I'm not going to pretend like mom doesn't get upset. I'm not going to tell him it's one thing and our behavior is different because then all I'm teaching him is my, my intuition then must be off because I'm reading this as being something else, but everybody who loves me and takes care of me is saying, no, there's not a problem. And I do not want my whole thing is teaching people how to separate those two things. Like I say, my work is about healing the divide between culture and self. Yes. Because the reason that you, you know, got messed up or along the way was like, well, everybody else is telling me it's supposed to be this one thing and I'm having a different experience. And it's that dance between the two. And so I certainly, if I'm going to try to teach people that on a you know, level of hopefully people will show up and listen, I certainly need to do that in my home. So I appreciate and hearing that so much from you um, because I find that I have to do the same thing with Jonah and just being transparent because I'm like, just because he doesn't have all the words or maybe consciously he's not aware, subconsciously he absolutely knows. Yeah. And the more that we begin that relationship now, by the time I have a 17 and 15 and a half year old living in my house, that line of communication is going to be so much stronger because I've from day one had created that the baseline of a mom tells the truth age appropriate, obviously. Right. But like mom tells the truth. I believe her when she says this thing, um, which is the last thing I wanted to say about your offering. And then I'll throw it back to you, which was like, I think a lot of what I'm hearing you say, I identify in the way of, I call it like my baseline, Mm -hmm. meaning like my baseline is that I do go to bed at 10 PM so that I can get up before my family and have that time to creatively throw up in a journal or like do the mental trash exercise, figure out like, so that I can kind of get my mind right before it is those snuggles on the neck. And it's like, I literally woke up and I've not had like, that's difficult for me when I haven't given myself that time to come into my own. Right. And like, that's so hard because again, that's the baseline. That's what Rachel hopes to do every day. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. You know what I mean? So like, if I know what the baseline is, that's the baseline of hopefully I'm doing that. I'm eating root vegetables. That's what we're we're reaching for every day. Yes. So that if I don't hit that, I'm still hitting something that is of my highest. Yes. So I'm not trying to live out of reach, but that's kind of this, again, where I'm at this month, which is like, I'm upgrading my baseline a little bit. So mm-hmm. it's like demanding a little bit more of me in a way that feels appropriate of where I am on my journey. But as you know, with when we are doing these things, those are going to shift a little bit, you know, slowly over time. And um, yeah, it's, I also love so much that you, so you've been like homeschooling, totally jumping, but I was like, I feel like homeschooling is All like relevant. Cool now. Like all of a sudden people are like, yeah, yeah. Cool. and it's like, oh, you're like an OG. You've been doing this for like, yeah. I know you're right. And also I, I always offer this disclaimer. I homeschool in the state of Texas, first of all, which is, makes it easier. Yeah. In my opinion, um, homeschooling is not the same as what was going on during the quarantine for all parents. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. For me, it's not. My heart goes out to the parents that had to do that. 
Because I spent two and a half years contemplating on homeschooling before I made the decision myself and Mm. before I selected what curriculum seemed right for me, right? And then in the last 14 years, that has evolved because I decided, right? You were sending your kid to school one day and then the next day you woke up and you was homeschooled. And not to mention, I saw some of my homeschool friends do this. The homeschoolers that the full time homeschoolers that were ripping other people to shred saying what you're doing is not homeschooling. You're right. It's much more brutal because the concept that my child would be sitting inside my house looking at a computer being told by a teacher who is in another location that you can't eat during class does not make sense to me at all. I don't understand what my child sitting in front of the computer eating a Snicker bar or whatever they're eating is is distracting to you. But that's a whole nother conversation. Um, No, but I love that you said that. I think because I know there are so many people that are still like mentally and physically recovering from what that was like of having to do that with kids at home. And while, you know, keep their like marriage together. I mean, that's just so everybody's working from home, too. Yeah, it's so much. It's so much. I couldn't even like, and we, you know, and we all had our own of no matter where we were, there was trials that everybody was going through. And my husband and I were very good about checking in, even though it was really difficult. You know, I'm pregnant and that, you know, there was a lot, but it was like, you know what, but this is a pretty good set of terms for this experience right now. You know, I was like, we'll be grateful. I would say, be grateful for your problems. You know? Yeah. I was like, that was kind of one of those times. So Two more things that I want to ask you, and I'll ask you at once so you can kind of have a second, which is... Okay, can I you pause because have- I want to say something to you before I forget? Oh, please. Um, you are already existing as your high self. Hmm. You're not actually trying to achieve your high self because how you show up in the world... And, and look, I'm going I'm to go out on a limb and I'm going to just be honest. This is not a message for everybody. I'm specifically talking to you. <laughs> because a lot of people might think and I have seen this oh I'm already my highest self no 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 no. I'm not talking to you I'm talking to Rachel LaForce who is actively doing the work literally every minute of every day so the fact that you're you live 24 hours a day in a space of wanting to change and grow no matter what that looks like that's your confirmation that you wake up every day as your highest self doesn't matter if you wake up before the kids, doesn't matter if you journal, doesn't matter if you work out, you are already where a lot of your clients and followers would love to be, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you feel like you're a work in progress because there's these things that you know that you're capable of that you haven't arrived at yet. But I wanted to make sure that before we moved on that you understand that fully. Like when you talk about yourself and your highest self, that's how I refer to it we're already our highest self because the very moment that, or or the very idea that we're, we're always like, how did that feel for you? Are you okay? Did I do that? Okay. Hey baby. Um, I said such and such earlier. Did, was that hurtful? You know, you're already your highest self because people who are their highest self, that's how they talk. They may not wear the perfect outfit. They may curse a lot. doesn't matter. So you're there. I really appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. You're welcome. I really, I really, really do. I appreciate that very, very much. Thank you. And the caveat, that was not for all of you guys, okay? That was just for me. Because you got to tell um, the people, there's some people out here that's doing some shit that they're not supposed to, and then they hear me say what I'm saying, and I'm like, no, sis, you got to look growing in it. Oh, that's so funny. You're like, uh, no, 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 that one was not for you. No, I really, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um I kind of wanted to, obviously you have this like beautiful body of work and you take clients and all these things that you're doing. I'm kind of curious, like one, what you, or two parts. One, if you feel like right now, what is one kind of thing that you're really wanting to like share with people? Like if you're like, here's the one thing. And then the second part of that is like, what do you feel like is next in your work for you? Or what are you, or even if you're like, no, I just birthed this new thing. Like what's the thing that kind of gets you vibrating every day. Um, 
I'll have you answer those and I just have one other. But the last one's real easy and quick because I know we're getting close to time. So I don't want to keep you. But yeah. Um, oh, I'm good. Uh, I prepared for 90 minutes because that's what the email told me. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Um, so one of the things that I really want people to know right now, like what's keep, what keeps coming up for me in this season is the concept of enough. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, so see, we're living in an information age right now where there's a lot of information coming at us. And I have this thing where if it seems like too much, then I don't do none of it. I don't do any mm -hmm. of it. So let's say I'm working out. Let me tell you what Alana is not about to do. I'm not about to count a macro, a calorie. <laughs> you, If you think I'm about to pull out a goddamn scale and weigh some ground beef, you have lost your mind. Okay? That's now, crazy. will I do it later on? I don't know. But the concept of enough is that what I'm doing right now if it feels good to me, it's enough. Because hmm. let me tell you, I know how to eat until I'm done, right? I don't, and nobody's out here overeating kale. Nobody yeah. is in, nobody is in danger of kale toxicity, right? Nobody oh. is sitting here like, you know what? Let me chop up this kale. Oh my God, I ate two bowlfuls. So, uh. I, I'm, I'm, I'm living in a space of enough. You know, if I could talk to the Alana that was the mom of smaller kids, I wouldn't have, I, I would have worked out in my garage, right? I wouldn't have tried to go do all the big things and join all the classes, or I would have at least incorporated that in more for myself, you know, just going into the garage and jumping rope or YouTube has been around for a lot of years. You know, um, that's what I work out on is uh, I follow a girl on YouTube. And so everything that I'm doing may not be all the things I, and I'm going to air quote this one, want to do. I don't even like the word should. Um, we be shooting all over ourselves all the time, don't we? <laughs> uh, everything that I'm doing may not necessarily be what I want to do but it is currently what is in my capacity to do. And here's the magic pill. If all I do is just consistently do that and I just don't stop. The, consistent, the consistency pill and the don't stop. And that's whatever consistency is for you. Because consistency, since we're on the workout thing, consistency yeah. for you may be going for a walk. Consistency for you may be going for a walk twice a week. Because we're building. That's the other thing we forget about in this concept of enough. We're building something. And so um, I have a background in uh, new construction real estate. I was in, in new home sales for some years. And there were times and seasons where the people who were actually building the houses couldn't do certain things because of the conditions, right? You might not be pouring a slab when it's pouring down raining outside. And that's the most important part of the whole gig is the foundation. And so there was, there was a part in this leg of the journey where my commitment was I woke up every single day and I rode my bike unless I needed a rest day. At the most, I would go two days. But for the most part, I would take a day, but I was riding my bike. Was there a certain number of miles I was trying to ride? I was not. I found myself doing at least two and a half, but that's all, riding my bike. I was noticing that if I ate a something the night before, or if I didn't sleep, that was the big one. If I didn't sleep enough the night before, the bike ride was harder. My legs felt heavy. I paid attention to that. I started making sure I got enough rest. Um, I started making sure I incorporated vegetables into my life. I wasn't doing a lot of drastic changes. You know, I was born in 1976. I'm from the year of the rice and gravy. Okay. That's what we ate uh, growing up. And in, in I'm from Louisiana. So we okay. had, you know, pork chops and gravy with corn. We had smothered chicken and gravy with beans, you know. So already that's a good foundation in my opinion. Yeah. Your girl know her way around the kitchen. So what I'm doing at every level is enough. 
If I'm not hurting anybody, what I'm doing is enough. And if I consistently do that every single day, Rachel, without exception, it moves the needle. It 100% moves the needle. And so that's the thing. That's the thing that I want to, that I'm developing, you know, words and, and um, delivery on. And then the thing that I, you know, would love to increase in my business, the thing that I would love to see more of in my business is public speaking. I would love to, you know, show up on a stage and work with the likes of Google and, you know, Starbucks. Uh, I got my foot in the door, but um, I'm trying to get into the corporate office. Um, you know, places like Nike and, you know, corporations like that, that I feel they they currently perform on a very high level. And a lot of them are progressive enough to understand mindset, but they don't understand it to the level that I understand it. And so that's where I'm trying to go. I love that. I love that so much. I feel I was just having a conversation. I had coffee this morning with a woman who works in uh, health policy. And we were saying the same thing because she was like, you know, speaking is where the money is at. But she was like, policy is really where we make change. Mm. She was like, but the bigger audience of the more influential people you can speak in front of that also kind of helps, you know, change policy faster, et cetera. And we were talking about um, her big thing is, uh, you know, mandatory mat and paternal leave. And I was saying that's actually a lot of what I want to institute and help within corporate, especially like, uh, you know, C-suite folks is like, you need to learn to integrate rest because you think that everybody being here, well, I'm making assumptions, but let's assume that they all think where it's like, well, everybody has to come into the office. They have to be here. They have to work X amount of hours and this and that. I'm like, you are decreasing your productivity and you're actually spending more money because you have people here when they're not performing at a hundred percent. Right. Cause like you said, where it's like, sure, they may show up to the office every day, but are they putting in medium effort or are they putting in full effort? And so they really, ain't showing up to the office on time and staying all day. I work for exactly. executives of a, a high level of uh, oil and gas company. They wouldn't come in the door at 8am. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's, I think really, and this, there's definitely like this conversation is happening, but really wanting to like push it mainstream, which is like rest is productive. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when we teach people, like so much of my work right now is about teaching like sustainability, especially when I work with creatives, um, that I'm like, the only way that you will quote unquote find success is by creating something that is sustainable. So like you said, like, what is enough? What is enough for now? Like I tell people all the time, it's, um, Mark Duplass is an actor and uh, makes oh, documentaries yeah. and all sorts of things. Yeah. And he, his big thing is like swing the sword in your hand, meaning like it's the same thing of like, what season are you in? Like, what are you capable of? That's, that's what you tend to. Right. Um, yes. So I just, I love all that so much. Where, where are you in Texas? I live in Houston. Okay. Cause I'm doing a bunch of, um, like live salons next year oh. in different places where I'm doing like joint speaking or I'm working with different like healers or I'm working with like parent coaches and all sorts of stuff, different places. So we'll chat offline and see if maybe there's something that we could do together and find like a mini stage. And it's like, Absolutely. join us. Absolutely. I'm you know, for, Austin for some reason that's coming up in my brain. Oh yeah. I mean, Austin would be like, phenomenal. But yeah, I think that love there's it. like definitely, I would love to do something like that. Um, and, and yeah, and, and split the, split the stage and find, uh, you know, whether it was like thematic of this is what we're talking about. And maybe there's even a way in which like, you know, you speak on this thing and I speak on this thing or, you know, there's just, just to seed that into your brain and see if anything kind of sparks for you and we can keep a conversation going. But, um, yeah, I would absolutely, I love that. that would be so much fun. Yeah. So my and last every, everything is related kind of, to mindset and mental. So it doesn't matter what we talk about. Yeah. I mean, I, I love that. So much. that's where I was like, there's even, I'm even just like already seeing like a, um, like a flyer or something. And yeah, it's just like one of those like very clinical sides of like the brain and like the parts of the brain. And then just like over top, it's just like hack it or something. And then, you know, all of these or maybe um, you're leaning on one side and I'm leaning on the other side. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Just like the so clinical cheesy. brain and then both of us. Like, I'm joking. 
<laughs> back to back. Listen, I'm here for it. I'm but I'm just, I'm just gonna that. say, watch that ends up being the graphic. Oh yeah, that's what I was like. Listen, I we're gonna I take people, over the I'm world, like, Rachel. This is just the tip of the yeah. iceberg. I'll tell you what, just back to back, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely keep posting about that. So I'm I'm actually um, kind of shifting or not shifting, but more kind of focusing down really what I want this show to be um, like the Rachel for show, what we're doing right now and how I'm talking with people. And I've really found that a lot of my walk through life, if I had one identifier, cause that's always difficult for me where even as like, like I'm a creator, but I create all sorts of stuff. And then I'm a producer, but really like I'm a performer. And so I've found that the one term that actually rings true to me in almost all facets is, um, which often gets a negative connotation, but is the identifier of a misfit. Because I feel like, again, in this, this contrast of culture versus self, I, in fact, am reclaiming that, that word of I'm actually wanting to find and facilitate and work with all of the misfits, the people that are choosing to evolve anyway, and the people that are choosing to do all of the type of work that we're doing and go, Hey, just because this is the way it's always been done, we can stay open to another way. So really wanting to kind of create this light for fellow misfits of like, Hey, if you don't know where you fit in, like you fit in over here, like, come on over. Well, I don't know um, how you could do it without being a misfit because you know, there's such a, um, I did a podcast episode talking about the exchange of power. Um, mm-hmm. and I feel like the quarantine or, you know, the pandemic itself really was that it was it's not it didn't make it happen but it was part of showing us that this way that we lived before is not going to work going forward so you are 100 percent right on time for that because the way the way that it has worked is why we have a job yes yes exactly right so i was curious um kind of like if there was one thing that you feel like that maybe at different times of your life made you feel like a misfit or that you saw the world differently, are there any of those experiences or stories that you could think of that make you feel like, but now it's a thing I reclaim? Like, is there, is there some place that you felt like a misfit and now you're in this place where you're like, this is actually the thing about myself that made me a misfit that makes me love myself the most. Does that make sense? Uh, it absolutely makes sense. I, first of all, I think one of the actions would be that I, I have always been one to call it out. Like, mm. Mm, no, this soup tastes nasty. You know, always been one to call it out. Uh, everybody else at the table is like, oh yeah, yeah, this is good. No, it's not. Um, so that action, but what you're saying, I probably could pick a lot of things, but one of the things that I feel like is kind of like, ironic <laughs> I'm, I'm getting so tickled to say it get ready to say this I think it's ironic all the trouble I had in school like a lot of the trouble and a lot of the adults that I saw doing dumb stuff contradicting themselves a large percentage of it were people within school you know my teachers or coaches or counselors because you spend a lot of time in school i just think it's so ironic all the trouble i had in school and i failed the seventh grade i repeated the seventh grade and i homeschool my children successfully like these boys are not only astute but they understand the life around them they're intuitive they're connected they're, they have confidence. They have challenges, absolutely. But they have a mom who knows what it's like and who can help them strategize. So I kind of think it's a little bit of a middle finger up to the teachers who were like, she's going to have a hard time. She's never going to amount to anything. And now I have amounted to a mom who successfully homeschools her two sons. Uh, I... I love that so much. I love that so much. And that's like exactly what I'm talking about, which is this way of like re reclaiming those things that were painful for us or hurt us or made us feel other. And now that sense of like, but I'm so grateful for that thing. And I'm so grateful that I didn't allow those old voices, that mental trash, all of that to get in the way 
of, of blocking my blessings, which is just me, is me looking at the world differently. So I'm so grateful to you for sharing that. I could talk to you for days. I just absolutely adore you. I adore your work. The feeling work. is mutual. Yeah, just your, the, I think, compassion that you have oh, for yes. people Thank and you for, for yourself. That. Yeah, it's visceral. I mean, you can just feel it that there's this sense of, um, like I can, this is such a weird thing to say out loud, but like, I feel like I can feel the way that you give hugs and I'm like this woman, like, I mean, just like a full You're spot embrace. On. Okay. Yeah. I was You're like, just a I, I have had somebody tell me I look like I smell good. So you telling me I look like well, I give that's a good hug. too. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I, have just, to confess, I did put on perfume for this interview. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But yeah, just that full, just like physical embrace. And it makes you make people feel seen in a way like going back to what you said, which is like true love of seeing somewhere where they're at and then also holding them accountable. And so I just want to offer that to you of like, again, this is even Thank like you. a hashtag manifestation come true to have you here to get to chat. Um, and you know, next up Austin. So yeah, you know, <laughs> I love it so much. So let's call I'll, Mark I'll, a glass and see what he thinks about the whole thing. Oh my gosh, Mark, get him on the line. Somebody <laughs> call him. I um. So yeah, tell us again, and we'll we'll link all of your things, and and certainly be promoting this episode. Let us know um, where can we find you, and kind of all of that good stuff. Uh, yeah, where can we find you? So uh, I'm Alana Higginbotham on all platforms because I mean, you know, that's a mouthful. And so <laughs> why come up with some other confusing thing? It's Alana Higginbotham. It's a really long last name, but I got a really hot husband when I got that last name. So, you know, when it even out. Yeah, yeah, totally. My, my last name used to consist of four letters before he and I got married. Alana oh, wow. Renee was my last name, R-E-N-E. -E. And now I'm a Higginbotham. Move up in the alphabet and, and we love it. So it's Alana Higginbotham everywhere. I'm Alana Higginbotham on Twitter, Instagram, um, TikTok. I'm also on LinkedIn, obviously YouTube. And my jam, like my little sweet spot is on Instagram because that's the place where people can, you know, respond to me uh, even more than all the other platforms. But I, I, I show up everywhere. I show up everywhere. And my website is, big surprise, Alana Higginbotham.com. Wouldn't you know that wasn't taken when I searched up the, uh, <laughs> the URL, um, the domain name. And so everything that I just mentioned is also linked there at Alana Higginbotham.com. You can book me to speak from Alana Higginbotham.com. You can check out some of my courses. I have mini courses. I have major courses. Um, I am open to doing public speaking. Like I mentioned before, I have a book. I have a book and it is called The Mental Breakdown. And I so simply break down your mental, how you think like you think, why you think like you think, why it seems the world is coming against you, why it seems your environment is totally not what you want it to be and connecting that to your mental and how you can shift that in a very simple text. It's even got some little um, uh, activities at the end of each chapter. And then if you can couple that along with my body of work on YouTube, Instagram, things like that. And I even offer sometimes um, impromptu Zoom meetings where we just kind of all get in a room and just chat very similarly to the way we do here. Awesome. I love it so much. Yes, you guys, if you got to go check it out, these drive-bys are hilarious. There's just such great practical nuggets. Again, that's why I'm so attracted to your work that it's very, it's action-based stuff. You've mentioned a lot of action that you take in your own life and this ownership. So I just, we're all the better for it. So I love it. I love it. It's why so I do much. it. I know it's, it's corny to say uh, for some people, uh, but it's really why I do it because I could, so I could hold it in but it's almost like therapy for me. So yeah. telling you what's on my mind, what's think, what I'm thinking about, what I'm using to help my life, 
what I'm using to continue to build the marriage, to build the family, to build the business that I'm building, I know it's going to help you guys. It's wonderful. And I love that that you say, I love that because I say that all the time. Uh, Oh my God. And and this is what else I say. Oh my God. I love that so much. Yeah, me too. It's like, it's become one of my taglines, but the difference is the thing is we really mean it. Like it's not just something we say. I literally love that so much. (laughs) I know all the, it's so funny. There's a lot of stuff like that. Or, you know, if you're engaging with people on Instagram or something and there's kind of like a handful of the, the same things that I always say back, I find a lot of time, like, I'm so glad that resonates and stuff like that. I'm like, I'd hate for somebody to like, be like, oh, well, she says the same thing to everybody. I'm like, no, but I really mean it when I say that to each individual person of like, I do too. I'm so glad it resonates because it's very real to me. Yeah. So real that I was willing to share it on a public platform. So yeah. Yeah. I'm really glad it resonates. <laughs> I wasn't even know? talking to you. I was just recording myself, getting something <laughs> off my chest and it helped you. And we love it. I have really enjoyed myself. Your energy is very conducive to um, a, people really sharing their heart. And, and I, I'm really intentional about going, walking around in life with a space that I've created where people can feel like they can just be themselves. And it happens all the time. And it's very refreshing to be in this energy of yours. And just, it's really like we're two friends that, you know, from work and we're just talking shop, so to speak. And it just so happens that talk and shop is, you know, a personal, warm, squishy feeling thing that we love. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Yes, yes, yes. This has been amazing. I love it. Am I right? Did I tell you? Or did I tell you? I told you. What a great episode. And I'm so excited. We talked offline for a while of all of our dreams of how we're going to kind of put a new salon together in Austin or Houston. So next year when that happens, uh, and you're going to go, I remember when you guys were talking about this on the podcast. So definitely if you were in the Texas area, get at me, let me know. We want to come and see you and talk and share. So I'm so excited to see how my relationship uh, grows and being able to watch more and more of Alana's work because she's just such an inspiration and just exactly who she is. And it's just such a great reminder to us again of like where you are is enough and what you're doing is enough. And if that's not the most gratifying and peaceful, beautiful message that we all want to hear, I don't know what is. So check out the show notes, go and follow her, buy her book, all the things, check out her podcast, give her a follow and, uh, and get into it. Also, uh, this Saturday, that's November 18th. I have a, uh, the off duty moms tour is starting here in Atlanta. So if you're a mom, if you're a parent, if you like parents, if you've had a parent, or you just think I'm funny, highly encourage you to come out and check that out. You go to rachelforce.com under live and book your tickets to that show. Uh, it's myself alongside a handful of some of the very funniest women here in Atlanta that are also mothers. So I've been working on all new kind of hashtag mom material that may or may not also include about uh, how I peed myself at a concert recently because I now have a, um, a weak pelvic floor. So that's fun. Really just a lot of uh, TMIs about me. So lots of fun new stuff that's coming up. Go and check that out. Also, you still have three shows uh, in the salons that you can attend here in Sandy Springs at Phoenix and Dragon Bookstore. Go and check that out. Uh, you can go to rachelhorse.com and hit the live events and you'll see all of those there. Uh, and I'm so excited because next Monday, that's the 20th, you can buy your tickets and come see the live podcast recording with Chef uh, David Stample, who I'm so excited. Uh, he's going to be sharing all about his journey from the Food Network to now what he does is we define as like soul food. Uh, and he said he is going to be um, naming names. So there is for sure going to be some tea spilt and I am so excited for it, which you may go, Rachel, that feels very much not in your nature. And you're right, which is why it makes it so exciting. Because when the tea comes to you, that's exciting. So if you're in the Atlanta area, come and check that out. Otherwise, uh, make sure that you are following along over on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. You can always watch these on YouTube and on Spotify. Wherever you are, I hope you are well. Uh, As always, check in with all of my monthly events that I have going on. Uh, lots to do so much more that's coming up in the new year. So I cannot wait to continue to share 
and collaborate alongside you. Um, I'm just I'm grateful to be here. So take care of you. Tune out. Tune in. Love you, Mimi. Time, weather, and always pass.